It's a challenging job being a shopkeeper in a video game, trying to stack shelves and rotate stock while someone whips skeletons to death outside. The last thing these small business owners need, therefore, is you, the supposed hero, turning up and nicking their inventory. Which is why, should you steal from these fighty shopkeepers, you will sorely regret that five-finger discount. With thanks to the commenters on our last video on this very topic, who suggested more rowdy retailers for this follow-up list. Bipedal reptilian Pokemon Kecleon is a friendly little lizard who, along with his colour-changing kin, runs the store in the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series, peddling fruits and orbs and whatnot. If you were going to fear the wrath of any Pokemon, you'd expect it to be a mean-looking or hench or powerfully psychic one like a Charizard or a Tyranitar or even an Alakazam. There's some Pokemon whose drink you don't want to spill. Kecleon, on the other hand, appears to be a mild-mannered chameleon-adjacent critter, as adorable as he is harmless. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Or maybe he would hurt a fly, what with flies being his primary food source, but then only flies, and he would be super nice about it. Look at him. Just put that assumption to the test, though, when you run into Kecleon in one of the game's actual dungeons, where this reptilian retailer has set up shop for your dungeon-crawling convenience. If you help yourself to the items on offer, cramming them in your bag and running for the exit, the friendly shopkeeper will ask if you would care to, you know, pay for them. At which point you can openly declare your intention to do a robbery and invite the terrible wrath of Kecleon. Now you've done it. Now is when you discover that Kecleon, as suggested by every other comment on our last video, is arguably the most powerful enemy in the game. Not only can this mean green shopkeeping machine bring down just about any Pokemon in one hit, he changes type according to the last move that hit him, so he never has a lasting weakness. Basically the perfect killing machine. <laughs> If you can make it out the door without getting insta-wrecked by Kecleon, you'll find the rest of the dungeon floor is now awash with a loss prevention response squad of even more Kecleons, ready to take their payment out of Pikachu's shoplifting hide. Bad times, and a valuable lesson about not underestimating lizards. I mean, not shoplifting. Castlevania 64 is THE game to get if you're into whipping skeletons to death. Hell yeah! Of course it can't all be whipping skeletons, and once you've played for a little longer it turns out that what you should actually be whipping to death is Dracula, who shows up and roasts you right to your face. Come. Meet your doom. <laughs> you're not alone in your quest to get revenge for this roasting, but it pays to be wary of your allies when you're tramping around a Dracula castle full of vampires, as noted by commenter Matthew Bixler who says, I remember a playthrough of Castlevania 64 where I bought enough stuff from Renon, the demon merchant, that I had to fight him right before Dracula. This is Renon, who at first glance appears to be a regular human businessman in a sharp suit and hat. The giveaway is the long demon tail poking out from the back of his jacket. Oh, and the fact that he straight up tells you he's a demon and leaves conversations like this. Still, Renan is a demon who needs cash, and as such he can be summoned to sell you stuff using scrolls you find lying around the castle. These are apparently hard to read, and therefore you don't bother, but Renan still materialises to sell you useful items, such as health packs, purifying kits, and apparently artisanal deli meats. Try the roast beef! Don't ask where he keeps it. But as is ever the case with demons, there's a catch. Turns out that those contracts you keep picking up and not bothering to read because they're written in ancient demonic or whatever have a clause where if you spend over 30,000 gold pieces in Renan's shop, your soul is forfeit.
Anyway, Renan is here to enforce the contract, which is to say, turn into a terrifying monster and try to kill you. And he'll give it a bloody good go too, firing purple energy balls, swooping in with his new wings, and swinging at you with his demonic trident that I assume he was keeping in the same place as the roast beef. And, more distressingly, conjuring pentagrams out of which swim screaming demonic fish. Let this be a lesson. Always read the small print. Or learn ancient demonic first and then read the small print. Advice for life. As anyone who's played it knows, pretty much everything in Dark Souls is trying to kill you. Ooh, that's a new one. As such, it's extremely welcome when you do encounter a friendly face, like Andre the Blacksmith, an amiable merchant who, in exchange for souls, will upgrade your weapons early in the game. Plus, he looks like a big friendly muscle-bound Santa. Well, hello again. You seem to be doing alright. Unlike Santa though, it's a lot harder to get off his naughty list, as commenter Dane Peterson notes in their comment on our previous video. Also, Andre the Blacksmith in Dark Souls, says Dane. You can't actually steal from Andre, but you can get the same result and piss him off by giving him a couple of whacks with your weapon, at which point he will flip from chill, kindly Richard Attenborough Santa to enraged, fighty Bill Goldberg Santa who's about to kick your ass. And despite what you might expect from how he's an expert blacksmith who spends all day making swords, Andre in fact chooses to fight with his fists and feet, which is both A, probably a sign of disrespect, and B, terrible news for your face considering that his moveset includes bone-shattering drop kicks. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, this hostility is permanent. No matter how many times you die and come back to life, Andre is better at holding a grudge than Kanye West. You can go through a circuitous and fantastically expensive process to magically de-aggro Andre, but to be honest, it's probably just easier to get your ass kicked every time you need to come this way. My advice? Be good, for goodness sake. Ring of Pain is a dark and cryptic dungeon crawler in which you crawl dungeons by doing card-based battles. Your only friend is an entity known as Owl, and I'm not sure we can really call it a shopkeeper, but then I'm also not sure we can really call it an Owl. I mean, I've seen owls. Something's not right here. At any rate, Owl is ostensibly on your side, despite being as creepy as, well, a crawling bird-headed humanoid with claw hands and a beak full of teeth. And Owl does, in moments of your downtime between bouts of card-based suffering, offer you beneficial items. Sometimes with Owl, there's even a moment for friendly chat. Close enough. At the very least, Owl isn't trying to kill you. Unless, that is, you decide to reject Owl's friendship and, in a staggeringly unwise betrayal, attack it instead. <laughs> Understandably pissed off, this bird being turns on you with all the monstrous ferocity of a ferocious monster, chases you down and, to the surprise of none, hits like a big feathery truck. <laughs> If you do manage to survive Owl's counter-attack, and you probably won't, and you go on to kill Owl, and you probably won't, then your dubious prize is being whisked off to a final diamond-hard boss fight with Owl. Commenter Savvy the Divine Yet Huggable notes, kill him, and he literally becomes the final boss in the most horrifying way possible. Turns out that under that beak there's a second and much bigger mouth, full of teeth, that makes Owl even less like an owl, and even more like enough nightmare fuel to power the eastern seaboard for a month. Hey Owl friend, remember when you had just the one mouth? Those were the days. Oh! 
We spoke in the last video of the shopkeeper from Link's Awakening who, if you steal from him, will make you regret it with 20,000 volts directly to the face. <laughs> Turns out, though, that he's not the only sociopathic shopkeep in the Zelda series, as pointed out by commenter Lucid Lima, who says, In Zelda Skyward Sword, if you don't buy anything from Beedle, he will drop you through a trapdoor in his flying airshop. Due to the airborne nature of much of Skyward Sword and the floating land of Skyloft, Beedle's so-called airshop in the game takes the form of a regular shop being held aloft by a rotating helicopter blade. So far, so whimsical. However, ring the bell so Beedle drops you a line and lets you inside, and you'll soon discover that the only reason the shop remains airborne is that Beedle himself is powering the rotor blades by means of a pedal-powered dynamo. Still, Beedle is nothing if not professional, and still manages to pitch his shop's wares to you. And to be fair, there is some useful stuff on offer here, including a bigger wallet, a bug net, and a life medal. Thank you! Choose to not buy anything, however, and try to head out the door, and suddenly Beedle will switch from eager salesman to furious man who's been keeping a building aloft through nothing but his own pedalling power for hours. First off, he lectures you about how much you weigh and how much harder he has to pedal when you're around, and then he unceremoniously dumps you out of a trapdoor to, as far as he knows, your death. <laughs> Sure, you don't actually die, but there's no way Beedle knew that. And that's just from you browsing without buying. Who knows what he'd do if you actually stole something? Probably crash the entire shop into a mountainside just to teach you a lesson. The post-apocalyptic pixel art game One Step From Eden smooshes together multiple genres. Deck building card battler, bullet hell action game, roguelike RPG. If only they could have squeezed in Kart Racer, they'd have had the full bingo card. Your goal in One Step From Eden is to pick an anime lady character and then make your way down the treacherous path to the promised land of Eden. Along the way you'll end up battling all sorts of post-apocalyptic nasties, using the various spells in your deck while dancing around a 4x4 grid attempting to dodge your enemy's attacks. I haven't seen footwork that fancy since Carlton from The Fresh Prince was on Dancing with the Stars. One of the few areas in which you can feel entirely safe in the game is the tile marked with a little price tag, where instead of some sort of hideous monster, there's a single, unassuming looking shopkeeper waiting to flog you some extra spells and upgrades. You might wonder how a seemingly defenceless shopkeeper is surviving in this post-apocalyptic hellscape and you'll discover the answer if you either attack her and deal 100 damage or troll her by opening and closing her shop 30 consecutive times. Either way, as commenter Fuchs points out, describing her as one of the most violent shopkeepers in video games, the shopkeeper responds by bombarding you with a series of panic-inducing, screen-filling attacks. Friends, I f***ed around, and I found out. In spite of how chaotic all this looks, it's actually not impossible to beat the shopkeeper. If you can memorise her attack patterns accurately, or just get extremely lucky, you can knock her considerable life bar down to zero. Instead of the game punishing your senseless cruelty, you're instead rewarded with the shopkeeper unlocked as a playable character for future runs in the game. She doesn't come with any of those screen filling attacks as standard, sadly, but she does have a primary move that is throwing her own money at her enemies. I don't know much about the economics of retail, but that does not seem like a sustainable business strategy. That tone is especially valuable. Make absolutely sure you return it. Nelson Mandela once said that education is the most powerful weapon, which is true if we don't count having crystals that can harness demonic powers embedded in your skin. Luckily, Miriam, the protagonist of Bloodstained Ritual of the Night, has both said crystals, as we see here, and access to education thanks to the Livre X Machina Library, a repository of rare and powerful books overseen by a librarian who rejoices in the unlikely name of Orlok Fahrenheit Dracul. My name is Orlok Dracul, but you may call me O.D. I oversee this library, Miss... Miriam. 
Orlock will lend you books that increase your stats, but pay careful attention to the Livre Ex Machina lending policy, because if you try and hang on to one of those books for too long, he's not going to be happy, as pointed out by commenter Azure Dragoon, who says, OK, so he's a librarian rather than a legitimate shopkeeper, but he does lend you books that will improve your abilities. Take a book too far, though, and he will encounter you in a boss battle. To trigger this bibliophilic beatdown, you need to uncover 99% of the map, at which point a new book, the Tome of Conquest, will be available for you to borrow. Here to take out a book? Oh. I'll go with this. Orlok tells you that that book is especially valuable, and to bring it back, or else. Make absolutely sure you return it. This or else, you'll discover, is Orlok showing up to beat your ass if you try and take the Tome of Conquest through the part of the game known as the Glacial Tomb. I warned you, what you take from the library must be returned to the library. Oops. You'll pay for this transgression. Death is too kind for you. To be fair, this is a fairly accurate representation of some of the librarians at my old university. What follows is a rock-hard boss fight in which Orlok reveals hitherto unseen powers of teleportation, dark magic, and floating magic swords, <laughs> and even more aggravating, time manipulation, meaning he can bring you to a standstill, cast a bunch of magic knives, and then have them all hit you at once. Yes. Apart from anything else, it's all really noisy. I thought you were a librarian. If you do manage to best Orlok, the good news is that you can go back to the library and borrow all the books at once, because apparently this is the process by which new librarians are chosen. Impossible. I always suspected. That was the latest update from the field of violentist shopkeepers you don't want to steal from, as recommended by the very fine outside Xbox commenters. Why not join their number and leave a comment below with yet another shopkeeper who's primed and ready to kick our butts? And or, why not subscribe to this channel for a bit more like this one every Thursday of every week? Thanks for watching, see you next time.